and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Not read up by Disney or Lucasfilm, whichever way you slice it, Legends. Today I have for you books 7 through 10 of the Jedi Apprentice series by Jude Watson. Um, so starting, non-spoiler wise, book 7, The Captive Temple. Basically, we continue the little plot thread that was left off in the last novel with stuff going on at the temple. What's going on? You have to read it to find out. Um, book eight, the uns... Uh, sorry, book eight, where the fudge is my book eight, The Day of Reckoning, is the finale to the Xanatos arc. That is what I'll say for that. Non-spoiler-wise. Book nine is... The Fight for Truth. This is basically just kind of a side quest. It's a year after the events of Book 8. Um, and, uh... Oh, oopsie doopsie. Before you would read Book 9, if you were being stupid like me, you would read Legacy of the Jedi Part 3, which focuses on Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan as Master and Apprentice shortly after the events of Book 8. And, of course, dealing with the returning character from the past two sections of the Legacy of the Jedi book. But we'll get to that in spoilers. Book 9, as I was about to say, uh, is kind of just a side quest. It focuses on this uh, planet where everyone's kind of cult-like. They don't uh, really like... They, they, they spread false information about the outside world. Like, everyone's really ignorant. They only know what's going on in the planet. They hear lies and lies about the other planets because they fear about an impending doom that is coming. And that's about all I'll say for that. Um... Book 10 is a very, 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 very big side quest because it's not, I don't think this will be impactful to really anything else. There is an issue between two planets, kind of like Milada Dawn uh, earlier on, but um, for book 10. But of course, the book 10 is, did I even mention it? Book 10 is the Shattered Peace, sorry. Um, and it's just two factions on one planet um, fighting amongst one another. Well, they're, they're at like this, like, they're not in wartime. They have this very uneasy peace that they kind of have at the moment. So that's what's going on with them. Overall, these four books were a lot of fun. Uh, oh, and, you know, the section of the book uh, for Legacy of the Jedi was also really interesting. As for character growth, that really happens in 7 and 8. 9 and 10 are kind of just there. We also get a little bit more of a character with Siri who is a girl we got introduced to earlier. But other than that, not much happens in these last two books that we read about. But that's okay, because it's more Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, which is always worth reading. But uh, as for like a continuing plot thread or character development, um, uh, to me it seems like, I, like Obi-Wan seems to learn something, or Qui-Gon seems to learn something. There are interesting bits in 9 and 10, um, like, they're not bad stories by any means, but they're kind of, like, self-contained for the most part. Um, so, yeah. But, oh, overall, good read and uh, definitely worth your time. I'm going to get into spoilers now. If you don't want spoilers, time to check out. But I'll be with you in a second. All right, everyone, we're heading into the spoiler section of the book. If you don't, or of the video, if you don't want spoilers, now it's time to check out. If you're a veteran or you just don't care about spoilers, join me as I discuss some of the things that I had to mention. Uh, so for book seven, the captive temple, um, we get near the end of the book and Obi-Wan and, um, oh, sorry, hold on. Uh, Obi cries over Ben's capture. Uh, Qui-Gon talks to Obi. So they have like this, this big dialogue moment where Obi-Wan is just freaking out because Xanatos, um, and Brock, who we learn is the uh, the former bully to, to Obi-Wan is now being the apprentice to um, the dark Jedi, Xanatos. And um, they kidnap uh, Ben, who is this um, Calamarian, Admiral Akbar sort of uh, alien that is good friends with Obi-Wan at the, at the temple. And so she was kidnapped. And he's just, he's freaking out. He's like shaking. He, he just can't, he doesn't know what to do. And he's, he's crying like you would expect a 13-year-old to. And Qui-Gon comes over and calms him down. And it's really like when sort of reconciliation comes between them. Um, Brock 
fights Obi-Wan while Xanatos Zan fights Qui-Gon. And by the end of the fight, not because of anything that Obi-Wan did, Bruck dies. He falls over a ledge and uh, Obi-Wan tries to save him, but he fails and he dies. Um, so that was kind of crazy because it like mentions how he hits like a rock and his body goes... <coughs> and you got to remember, this is like a 13-year-old kid, so that was a bit disturbing to think about. Um, but of course, Xanatos gets away. Then we get to Book A, The Day of Reckoning. And basically, um, you know, they're trying to get to Xanatos, and by the end of it, you know, they're trying to bring him to capture, and Xanatos would rather die, and so he does, he dies. Um, and of course, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, by the end of this book, are fully reconciled. They're now master and apprentice yet again. Then we pop over, <clears throat> again, you don't have to do this. I will mention Legacy of the Jedi again when we get to the Clone Wars era, and you can kind of just read it all in one if you would like, like how Matt Wilkins would do that. But as for me, I like going in chronological order exactly. So if you're stupid like me, chronologically, Legacy of Jedi Part 3, the section that focuses on Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, you would read here. <clears throat> It's interesting because this book mostly focuses on Qui-Gon. Like, the the Apprentice series deals with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Like, we get to see both perspectives, like, throughout the entire series. But this one's just basically a Qui-Gon one. But it's interesting. He reflects on, like, Dooku and stuff in this section of Legacy of the Jedi. And he mentions, like, stuff about love. And how he doesn't think that love is inherently bad. And he thinks that it's actually strength of his to have love for people. And that he doesn't let it become, like... Uh, I forget the words he used. He's like, I don't let it become possessive. Kind of like how Anakin gets possessive of Padme. He's like, but I care for people, and I don't see that as an issue. And I love that about Qui-Gon. And had he not died, you know, I mean, he would have been really old regardless, but, you know, as a Force ghost, I don't know if he might have been gone already by that point, but I think he would have been proud of what Luke does in the future because that is the proper way to go about being a Jedi. Um, and this, of, of course, is shortly after Xanatos dies. And then we get to meet Lorien again. He went from Jedi, a Padawan, to pirate, to now being the leader of, of this entire planet or of city in the, in the planet. Um, and you're like, oh, is he reformed now? Is he really a good guy? No, of course not. But uh, we do find out by the end of the story that he made up uh basically a death star but city size like it only destroys cities he made that up though it doesn't exist he made that up um so that way people it was a whole thing where people would get scared and they came to elect him um and so then by the end of it he's yet again arrested and we will not see lorian node again until shortly after the beginning of the clone wars and we head back over to the jedi apprentice series of book nine the fight for truth a series a big portion of this book we get to see Obi-Wan and her kind of uh, bond a bit more. That's about it. There's this whole society where they refuse to tell the truth about the outside world. They, they give their children false information, indoctrination, all because they fear a future that they've envisioned. They don't exactly know what's going to happen, but they talk about men in masks and a darkness coming from the Jedi, which is really interesting. They're having visions I think, of Order 66 and of the coming Empire. But of course, you know, that's all... The future isn't set in motion, but they are right. And there's a very cool moment at the end of it where they're discussing that. And the light shines on Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon is looking at him. And in that second, he doesn't see the little boy anymore, the 13-year-old that is his Padawan. He sees an old man in a desert-like planet reflecting on darkness and loss or whatever and I thought that was really cool and then he blinks and it's gone and he's 13 year old Obi-Wan Kenobi again and Qui-Gon goes is that me no that's supposed to be Obi-Wan but the future isn't set in motion so he doesn't talk about it anymore as for book 10 shattered peace there's these two uh peoples on the planet and they hate each other 
um, and the sun is, the way they do it is it's kind of like Game of Thrones. There's a character in Game of Thrones where basically they fought a war um, and one guy lost. And to capitulate, he had to keep the the Starks that we meet in Game of Thrones. If you don't know Game of Thrones, this is really confusing. The Starks are kind of the main characters of, one of the main characters of Game of Thrones, the family. And basically the family has this character named uh, Theon Greyjoy. Um, and he is treated fairly well, like he lives in the palace, he's friends and brotherly with the other children. But should this opposing faction ever cross the family, <sighs> there goes the kid. He's a big hostage. He's not treated like a hostage, he's not treated badly, but he is essentially a bargaining chip. And so in that same sense, that's what the... The, the factions did decide the peace. They allowed one child over the one side, one child on the other side. Uh, but the father now wants the child back to rule. Um, and the child's happy there and doesn't want to go back. So that's kind of where the conflict arises. Nothing much happens uh, overarching story-wise to, to mention. Um, of course, this whole conflict does make uh, Obi-Wan reminisce about um, you know his choice in the in the books where he decided to stay with this faction but other than that nothing really happens in this book i mean it's a fun little read it was interesting i enjoyed the the dynamics between the two peoples but um nothing overarching to talk about there so that is pretty much it guys if you enjoyed this video give us a, oh my goodness <laughs> i'm so sorry give it a thumbs up sharing helps out a ton don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe to matt wilkins Quinlan Voss, if you're watching this video, I'm shouting you out because you're a good guy. Quinlan Voss is cool. Go check him out. Go check out Christopher Nelson, OG Star Wars. And if you want some stuff with me, live action wise, comedy skits, Finn Shamrock is a channel for you. And if you like video games, Lazy Boys is uh, another place for you. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I already said that. <laughs> Catch me next time as we get into books 11 to 15 of the Jedi Apprentice series and some bleh, Star Wars tales. Until then, guys, may the Force be with you.